Welcome to Buffalo Camp Day Recap. I'm Thad Brown along with A.J. Feldman. The final week of Bills Camp got underway here at St. John Fisher University on Sunday. It was a helmets only practice for the Bills, no pads, no surprise. It was blazing hot out here in Rochester and it was the only practice that wasn't 9.45 a.m. The Bills got going 11.45, so we got a lot more of that summer heat and boy, we felt every single bit of it today. Yeah, you could tell everybody, you know, the, the fans, they were cleared out basically by the end of practice. Yeah. Uh, it was it was hot. Everybody was, you know, looking for the shade. Just we could just talk for about 20 minutes about the heat, but then we'd have to stand out here. So <laughs> we're not going to do that <laughs> to avoid the heat. We're going to keep this probably on the shorter side today. It was uncomfortable, so it made sense for the Bills to go with a lighter practice. Now, it was not a shorter practice. They went about the standard length today um, in terms of things that stood out to us from this practice. And again, you know, with no full pads on, I'm going to kind of stay away from the offensive line stuff, at least to start. But I have been, since he came into the league, a giant Dane Jackson fan. I have always been the guy that says he can play, he can be a starter, he can be dependable. He has not, for the second straight year, had the camp to back me up there. Now, look, he's not bad. You know, there was that uh, highlight the other day of Stephon Diggs catching a ball one-handed against him and where Dane Jackson fell down. That was not an example of Jackson terrible coverage. He just slipped. But he is not a guy that is able to stay up on the Diggses and the Davises of these practices of this NFL world to be able to be a dependable every down plus level NFL starter. Could he be Levi Wallace in terms of that level? I think he can be. Um, and I'm still a fan of him. I think he can very much play in the league. But Christian Benford is getting regular starting time. Obviously, Kyir Elam is a factor. You know, the idea of Dane Jackson being a starter, I'll tell you what, even if Trey White is not ready for week one, I'm not sure if Dane Jackson will be the week one starter because Benford continues to get first team reps and continues to, at the very least, not be embarrassed and I think generally hold his own. On the corner, you know, uh, section of our discussion here, um, Cam Lewis, by the way, did not have a very good day. He's a guy that's fight, fighting for a roster spot. I like him. I think he's a, another player who has been a, a better than you would think type guy for the Bills. Um, but a lot of short routes in the offense today, and he was not able to really take anything away from either Diggs or Davis. But again, going back to Jackson, I still like him. I still think he can play, but he's now in a battle to even be the starter if Trey White's not there for week one. Yeah, you know, when Kyir Elam was drafted, obviously, you know, he's a first-round pick. He's the guy that they want to be the starter. But if Trey White was back week one, it was, you know, do you go with Dane Jackson, who had a little more experience? Do you go with Kyir Elam, the, the raw first-round talent? I think, you know, hypothetically, if Trey White is back for week one, I think you're definitely slotting in Kyir Elam in, in, no in week yep. one. Yeah, and, um, you know, and, and you, you mentioned Lewis, um, a guy that – certainly had the most NFL experience of these young rookie depth cornerbacks. So I think that was the guy everybody kind of had as their maybe last cornerback in the room. Mm -hmm. I think everybody, you know, we, we do these roster projections, things yeah. like that. I think everybody's kind of sliding him back off of that roster at this point in time. Uh, another another topic I want to hit on, uh, the receivers today. We had um, Isaiah McKenzie, Khalil Shakir both out today, um, not practicing, just dealing with some soreness from uh, some Friday's practice. So I was looking at the slot guys. You're, uh, you know, Jamison Crowder, Tavon Austin, both practicing today to step up. You know, Jamison Crowder missed the first little bit of training camp. You know, this was a, a prime time for them to get some really good reps and, you know, make an impact. They didn't have bad practices, mm -hmm. but none of them really, you know, stepped up to the occasion. Jamison Crowder had um, a nice play or two in, uh, in one-on-ones, but nothing really crazy where, you know, you have Isaiah McKenzie out, you have Khalil Shakir out. You would have liked to see them step up maybe a little bit more than they did. Yeah, there's no doubt that there was an opening there for Jamison Crowder to kind of remind everybody that he's the guy that's been a slot in the NFL for a long time, and he definitely did not do that today. Yeah, you know, you, you talk to the fantasy football guys or whatever. This was, you know, uh, oh, you know, Cole Crowder. Beasley. Yeah, Cole yeah, Beasley's yeah. not here, but Jamison Crowder, I think, you know, now that's becoming, you know, as we've seen all throughout camp, Isaiah McKenzie. And speaking of Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Hodgins, another nice practice today as he tries to get in there um, as one of the last guys in the wide receiver room. Yeah, I like Hodgins. I, I'm surprised how much I would like him because, you know, I think that he was overhyped coming out as a sixth-round pick a couple years ago. Obviously, he's had injury issues, wasn't much of a factor at all last year. He's had a nice, solid three, four, five practices in a row here. And on a team where when you think about non-slot receivers, it's Davis Diggs and then Jay Kumaro, you know. So I think there is a path for Isaiah Hodgins to be on this team. And he is, for the most part, you know, making the most of his opportunity. There were some injury updates today. The big one is Roger Saffold is off the non-football injury list. He was in a helmet for the first time ever at a Bills training camp practice. He did individual drills, but nothing against another player. No one-on-ones, no team stuff. 
Spencer Brown, though, was at least in one-on-ones for sure. Uh, he had two reps, one against Greg Rousseau. Brown looked good. He had one against Von Miller. He did not look good. You know what? Von Miller does that to a lot of guys. I saw him take one team rep today. Now, because he only took one team rep, I wonder if maybe I was seeing something. It but was very hot out today. It was. I mean, <laughs> not out of the realm. But Spencer Brown, you know, being 6'9", it feels like he's 6'11", whatever it is, and wearing these bright red sleeves, if there's any one guy who came into a team rep, team situation for one rep, I think Spencer Brown would be the guy I would notice. So I am going to say I am 90-plus percent certain that Spencer Brown took a team rep today. Maybe he took more and I didn't see it. Maybe I was wrong the first time. Regardless, it was an improvement because the one-on-one stuff against the alignment was something new for Spencer Brown. Yeah, and the Roger Saffold coming back, you know, it doesn't mean much that he was there out in practice, but certainly for the timeline aspect of it, if he's going to be back in week one, like, you know, Brandon Bean said at his initial press conference, they expected him to be back mm-hmm. for week one, you would probably like to see him practice at about this time. You know, he's certainly not going to play in the preseason week one and maybe he doesn't get any preseason time at all, but just getting back there, getting in practice, getting into being in these formations, kind of start this continuity that they're trying to build up with all these new pieces. That's good. And it also allows maybe a guy like Mitch Morse to actually take a day off today, which, uh, <laughs> which, which, which yeah. 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 That was one of the things with, with Bates back and again, Saffold didn't do anything in team drills, but Mitch Morse finally got the vet rest day that I'm sure the team wanted to give him about three, four, five practices ago. And like you said, look, the first game is a month from tomorrow. So Roger Saffold's on the field in a helmet. I would say pretty optimistic he's going to be ready to go for week number one. The other news from today for the Bills is Reggie Gilliam. The Bills gave their hybrid tight end, fullback, running back, whatever you want to call him, Swiss Army knife. We heard that a lot today. A new two-year contract extension through 2024, reportedly worth $5 million. Gilliam talked with the media afterward, and he said he had no idea the contract was coming. It just literally, he said it kind of dropped out of the blue, and he said, okay, let's do it. It's really, it's really nice to get $5 million to drop out of the blue. I've never had that, but I can just imagine it was a pretty good day for him. Dinger Tuesday sometimes for AJ, by the yeah. way. That's a whole different podcast. But Gilliam was very excited, and he's got a great story. This is a guy who, in high school, he said, his high school team won a total of seven games his entire high school career. He didn't get recruited at all college-wise, got a look towards the end of his junior or senior year from a guy. I got a call from a coach from Toledo who said, they wanted him to come on and try and be a walk-on at Toledo. He succeeded there, didn't have a college scholarship until his junior year, didn't really play much till his junior year, kind of had to walk onto the Bills and earn a roster spot. And now, you know, like he didn't sign a Josh Allen $80,000 million contract, but he signed a multi-million dollar contract for a fullback in the NFL. It's pretty good, and needless to say, Gilliam was pretty excited. I was thinking about that this morning is because, you know, I came, I walked on to Toledo, then coming out, my pro day got canceled, and I thought that was the end of the road for me. And now I'm at this point, and I signed an extension. It's like, wow, I would have never would have thought back in 2020 I'd be signing an extension in 2022. Oh, my, my parents were so happy for me. They just they couldn't believe it, like you were saying earlier. They couldn't believe that, you know, just two years ago or three years ago, whenever that was, that, you know, we didn't even know if I'd be able to have a pro day to sco- show my skill set. And now here I am signing an extension. So not only was Gilliam the first in his high school to get a college scholarship, he was also obviously the first in his high school to sign a multi-million dollar NFL contract. And I asked him about, you know, what does that mean to the school to have now this guy that you can point to and say, you can get there from here. And Gilliam said it's been great. And, you know, the, he says he's got, there's pictures of him in action at Toledo and with the Bills all over high school. And he's gone back and talked to the kids. And, you know, obviously it means a lot to uh, the kids in Weston High School in Columbus, Ohio, that now there's an NFL graduate from their school. You know, something that didn't exist six, seven years ago when Gilliam was there. You know, and he, he even said that it's crazy that, you know, he's gotten from there to here. I mean, it's an unbelievable story. Yeah, and you mentioned having to walk onto the Bills. I remember this was my first year covering team, that training camp where he came in. I feel like he was the big surprise guy that, that made the roster that year, like, because, you know, the Bills really hadn't used a fullback very often. And they're like, fullback on the roster? That, that's interesting. So good to see him finally get rewarded and, uh, you know, continuing to develop and continuing to make the roster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken Dorsey talked today for the second time of training camp. Uh, The first time, you know, after he's really gotten a chance to get into the swing of things. You know, he's been at practice, you know, working through the communications, the the systems and things like that. And he talked a lot about, um, you know, the communication process of that Friday, um, you know, the red and blue practice, Mm -hmm. the scrimmage. Mm -hmm. In that practice, he was up in the the booth, um, up top above. He said 
He's still to be determined whether or not he's up top, whether or not he's below. Obviously, Brian Dable was up top. Ken Dorsey has been on the, you know, on the sidelines before. And he talked about how not only does he, does he have to get used to, you know, that vantage point, things like that, but just the communication with, uh, you know, himself upstairs and the people who are on the sidelines like he was last year. It's definitely a different vantage point and, and uh, um, you know, and just a different way of seeing things. But it was, it was good. I felt like... Uh, um, the communication was really good between uh, the box and the and the sideline, uh, and no matter where you're at, that's that's going to be critical. You know, if you're up in the box, you really got to tr trust your coaches down in the field. They're relaying kind of the feel of the sideline and and that communication there. If you're if you're down on the field, you got to really trust the the box guys to kind of be your eyes and be your uh, be the vision of some of the things that might be a little bit in your blind spots down the field. It is very rare for a first year play caller to have the type of success that the Bills want to have this year. I've only counted three first-time play callers that have been to a Super Bowl. Only one has won it, Mike Holmgren, all the way back in the mid-'80s with the Niners. Keep in mind that the idea of a play caller is a semi-recent thing. You go back to the 70s and early 80s, for the most part, the quarterback called all the plays. Technology, obviously, a little bit different 40 years ago. So you, we're not talking about the duration of all 50-plus Super Bowls that there have been play callers, but for the most part, for Dorsey to be a first-year play caller and for the Bills to get to the Super Bowl would be very much an exception to the rule. And not only that, most of the guys who do go to the Super Bowl as play callers are guys who have called plays for 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 years. Very, very experienced play callers. So it's unusual that a guy in his first year learning the job you know, uh, is going to be able to have, the, the, like I said, the success the Bills want to have. Yeah, and coming into this season, probably the biggest question mark is, of course, that offensive coordinator. You know, you see the national guys, you know, Kevin Clark, uh, you know, we had him on early yeah. on. That was, you know, the, the topic of his big article that he came to write is, you know, this super-powered offense, the Super Bowl favorite, they've got a guy who's never really called plays before. So it's certainly, from the outside perspective, the thing that people are worried about, uh, not maybe not worried about, but, you know, the, the big talking point. And uh, we'll see how the first four weeks go because if, if things – don't look, you know, because even last year, things weren't super crisp in that Steelers right. game, that Dolphins game. Right. If that happens this year, it's not going to be, oh, it's week two of the, the regular season. Who cares? You know, we still got Josh Allen. It's going to be, is, is, can, can Ken Dorsey do this? Yeah. It's going to be a little bit of that. It's funny to think if the Bills are 1-1 one and one facing last year's Super Bowl champion and last year's AFC number one seed, and they don't score 30 either game, say they score 23 and 28, there's going to be questions about the offensive coordinator. Where 29 places in the league, nobody will care, but that'll be the place here, or that'll be the situation here in Buffalo. Greg Rousseau also met with the media today, and the very first thing he was asked, no surprise, was, did you hear what Von Miller said? He feeds you for breakfast, gunpowder and gasoline? And, you know, Rousseau nodded his head. He said, you know, Miller is actually a pretty funny guy and talked a lot more about his end of the brand new Rousseau Miller. I learned a lot from Von, you know, on and off the field, great resource, great dude. I ask him about a lot of things, pretty much everything. Anything I need advice on, I go to Vaughn, and he's just like, he's like an open book. So it's been great so far. Rousseau getting a lot more comfortable year number two uh, with the Bills. A lot expected of him. He seems to understand that. You know, whether it actually happens remains to be seen. I will say, I think Rousseau has been better this camp, more active, a little quicker. Um, but I still think he's got a long way to go to get where the Bills want him to be as a first-round pass rusher. Yeah, and it's not a training camp practice this uh, this year without talking about the fights that have been going on. We did have another one today after they, you know, they were on their best behaviors at the scrimmage uh, on Friday. For the, out the outdoor practice, actually. The yeah, outdoor yeah, yeah. practice, yeah. Um, Tyrell Dodson, David Questenberry kind of get into it. Uh, Dodson was kind of in with a lot of linemen in there. Um, he eventually got his helmet kind of yeah. taken off there. Um, so another day where tempers fly a little bit, but that was, you know, in, in the beginning of practice. And in practice, we didn't really see much, so they, got a, they kind of got that other system pretty quickly there. But we got one in today. We so did. if you had, yes, if you had over a half for fights at a Bills practice today, a training camp practice, you're a winner today. Congratulations. I don't know what the odds were on the board. I'm sure it was like minus 300 or something like that. I was, anyway. I was going to say minus 270, so we're yeah. on the same way. <laughs> That's how often they're happening. Okay. We're all done here for uh, today. Uh, for A.J. Feldman, I'm Thad Brown. Remember, you can watch. Buffalo Camp Day Recap. Every single day there's practice here at St. John Fisher at rochesterfirst.com. You can also listen at Spotify. It'll be me and Carl tomorrow, correct? No, me again. AJ's back tomorrow. Yes, back in the heat. We are here in oh. the heat, so you don't have to be. That's our new slogan. <laughs> Hopefully only for two days, but tomorrow is supposed to be a burner. Uh, fortunately, just a 9.45 a.m. practice tomorrow. We will talk more about it then. For AJ, I'm Thad. We'll see you tomorrow on Buffalo Camp Day Recap.